Best seen from, and so the caged bird goes. Interior, fifth floor hallway, Maple Hall, afternoon. Dallas Cole, 18, is a brand new freshman at Tecani Valley University. Today is move-in day and the hallway is bustling with parents and other freshmen as they carry suitcases and push carts into various dorm rooms. Dallas is pushing a cart full of her bags down the hallway and is being followed by her mother. Jen Cole, early 40s, is Dallas's mom. She is an alumni of Tecani Valley University. Being awfully quiet, Dallas. Are you excited to meet your roomie? I remember that I was so nervous to meet my roomie, but we ended up becoming best friends. Isn't that exciting, Dal? You're about to meet your new best friend. Mom, stop. Come on, come on, honey. I'm just, I'm just excited. The whole campus brings back so many memories. It looks the same, and yet, oh, it's so updated and new. And that brand new dining hall we passed on the way in wasn't here when I was here. It looks, oh, it looks super nice. We should eat there for lunch. Oh, 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 room 522. Your room must be the next one. Dallas and Jen weave around people to get to room 524. There are two names posted on the door written on colorful construction paper and decorated with stickers and pom-poms. One reads Dallas, the other one reads Kalindi. Somebody has crossed out the C-A-L part and it just reads Lindy. Room 524, here we are. I wonder if your room is here yet. Kalindi. Huh. Lindy must be her nickname or something. Looks like she scribbled out the first part of her name. It's a little weird. Mom, shh. She could be inside right now listening to you. You're right. You're right. All, all right, let's go in. Dallas opens her new student folder and takes out her student ID. She inserts it into the door and a small click is heard. She opens the door. Nobody's inside. Oh, looks like she's already moved in. Interior, room 524, Maple Hall, afternoon. One side of the room is bare. The other side is set up already with plain dark blue sheets and a few sports posters on the wall. A laptop is sitting on the bed. Mm. She must be a tomboy or something. It almost looks like how a boys room would look. Mom, stop in the room. Grace, where are you at? Whatever she is. Dallas and Jen begin unloading the cart and opening up suitcases. Excited chatter echoes into the room from the hallway. Jen begins to place sheets on the bed while Dallas starts putting her clothes on hangers. Hey. The sound of a male voice makes both Dallas and Jen look up. Lindy Woods, 19, is an African-American trans male with short black hair. He has a charming smile and dresses in athletic clothing. He's holding a half-eaten donut in his hand. Hey. Hi there. Uh, there are donuts down the hallway for all the freshmen, by the way. Oh, thank you. Are you from one of the other floors? Oh, no. This is my room. Pause. Dallas tilts her head in surprise. Jen shakes her head with an awkward oh, laugh. No, no, I, I, I'm sorry. I, th I, I think you have the wrong room. I'm Lindy. I'm assuming that you're Dallas. Nice to meet you. Dallas nods. Jen has a shocked expression. Uh, uh but... But this is the girls' floor. The floors in the storm aren't co-ed, I thought. Trust me, I'm not exactly thrilled about it either, but according to this campus's policy, I'm legally still a female and therefore have to room with one. Dallas studies Lindy thoughtfully. Jen's face turns red and she storms past Lindy to get up the room angrily. Lindy shrugs with an unbothered look and walks over to his bed, sitting down. Your mom seems nice. Oh, um... I'm, I'm sorry, ignore her please. She's, she'll be fine with it. Will you be? Pause. Jen storms back into the room with an RA following her. The girl's name tag reads Maggie. She smiles brightly at Lindy as she enters the room. Jen is visibly upset and has her arms crossed. Hey, Lindy. Hi, Maggie. You must be Dallas. I was told that you are uncomfortable with Lindy. Dallas drops her smile and immediately looks at Jen. What? No. I never said that. It's, Mom. It's just, it's, uh, it's just, um, he looks like a boy. He sounds like a boy. He could just be lying about being a girl just to get a, just to get a room with one. Have you even, even, like, checked? Awkward pause. Dallas looks mortified. Lindy lets out a low, amused laugh. Uh, checked. Jesus fucking Christ, Mom. Do you know how rude it is to say something like that? No, no, it's okay. He's right. How rude am I? I should have just dropped my pants and shown you my vagina the second I walked in. My mistake. Do you want to see now? No, th this is absolutely not a joke. This is serious. I want my daughter moved to a different room. I'm sorry, ma'am, but your daughter is an adult. She is the one who gets to decide if she stays or leaves. Okay, come on, honey. You can tell her that you want to switch rooms. You can get a nice, real roomie that will be your future best friend. Pause. Dallas and Lindy meet eyes for a beat. I'll stay. It's not a big deal. What? 
not a big deal. Great. Thanks, Dallas. I'll see you guys at the hall meeting tonight. Make sure to go grab some donuts down the hall before they're all gone. Oh, trust me, I have already made three trips. Maggie laughs and exits the room. Jen is fuming. Lindy puts headphones in and turns his attention to his laptop, unfazed. This, this is absolutely fucking ridiculous. I am I am calling the campus president tomorrow and I'm getting this sorted out. Pause. Jen continues to make the bed, muttering under her breath. Dallas stands and watches her. Mom, I really think you should go. What? I said I want you to leave. We were supposed to get lunch together before I left it and, and explore the campus a bit together. Well, you're being extremely rude, and to be honest, you're embarrassing both me and yourself. So please, Mom, I'd really just like you to leave. An awkward silence hangs over the room. Jen shakes her head in shock. Lindy removes an earbud when she sees Jen crying. This was supposed to be a special day for us, Dallas. A special day for us. I wanted to show you around my college campus, but... Now? Now you completely ruined it. Jen storms out of the room. Dallas sighs and continues unpacking. I know this is probably going to be weird for a little bit. For both of us. Uh, I just want to let you know that I am not shy. Seriously. Feel free to ask me anything. I'd rather you ask than just assume things. Dallas smiles at me. Thanks. I will. You don't want me to, like, leave the room whenever you change and stuff? Just, um, let me know. It's not a problem. Oh. No, I, I mean, it's your room, too. I'm a gentleman. I'll at least sit in the corner and face the wall. They share a laugh. Pause. Dallas continues unpacking. I do, um, have a question, actually. Shoot. What's it like? What? Transitioning? No, like, realizing that the person that you think you are isn't who you actually are. It, it, it just sounds super confusing. Sorry, um... You're the first transgender I've ever met. I don't know much about the whole thing. Well, that was probably the nicest way that question has ever been asked to me. Thank you for that. Usually it's, so how old are you when you decide to become a boy? Or something like, um, well, it's shitty. It's really fucking shitty. Because nobody gets it and everybody just sees me as my physical self. They see me as a female who chose to become a male or as a lesbian that dresses like a male. I just want them to see me as me, as Lindy. It's just, it's frustrating, especially with people who knew you pre-transition. It's a lot easier meeting people after you fully transitioned. That's why I wanted to go away to college far away in the middle of nowhere. Just wanted to be me and fully me for the first time. But still got fucked over by campus policy and everybody knows. And again, I'm the female, the male trans dude, instead of just Lindy. Pause. Dallas nods thoughtfully as she listens and continues putting her clothes away. Laughter from the hallway breaks the silent pause. That's, that makes a lot of sense, actually. It reminds me of a poem I read once. I love poetry. Do you remember how it goes? Sort of. Uh, something like, the caged bird sees itself among the other birds outside the window, but it cannot reach them. The twisted, sharp wire bars shred its feathers and the tail whenever it tries. The little girl brings the caged bird food and water every day, and she tries to get it to sing with her. She wonders why the caged bird is quiet, for she brings it everything it needs and keeps it company. But one day, she looks out the window and sees the other birds singing happily and playing together in the bird bath, and her young mind understands. She opens the cage door, and so the caged bird goes shamelessly singing loudly for the young girl as it twirls around in the wind. It is no longer the caged bird, for now, it's just the bird. Lindy listens thoughtfully and tries to hold back tears. Thank you for sharing that with me. Hope that one day I can be just the bird, too. I hope so, too. Hey, thanks for not wanting to switch rooms, by the way. I was really nervous about who I was going to be placed with. I'm glad that it was like that, too. The sheriff's smile. And 